You may recall when we left off uh, last, um, I said I was just going to get on with the AM side with the radio because the, uh, the preamp and power amplifier stages are fine. And as per usual, I thought this would just be a yeah, fairly easy task. It usually is. But um, I found that uh, a few gremlins had got in here and it was actually something a lot more complicated than I thought. And if you look at that, it might give you an idea as to what I'm talking about. Somebody had messed with the coils so much so that they uh, unsoldered a lot of the connections on those coils. And when I say those coils, you probably know those little hair thick wires that uh, hang around there. And it's a hell of a job trying to sort them out. Specifically trying to get them in the right positions because this idiot, whoever it was, um, soldered them back wrong and in fact left one just hanging in the air. Now, finding that out was a pain in the butt because if you recall, uh, or if you know, some of these coils have very low resistance. So when you're trying to measure continuity, you find that uh, you'll have one with a very low resistance to ground, you'll think it's fine, and in fact you're actually reading the resistance through another path that is being switched in by the selector switches at the front. And that's exactly what happened quite a few times until I decided that the best thing to do was to actually desolder all the coils. When I say all the coils, I mean from the RF section because the, the actual um, oscillators were fine. It was just the RF. And the RF coils and in fact the RF trimming capac capacitors are those on the bottom half of that lot. So it's the three coils at the bottom, those two lower trimming caps, and then um, the oscillator section is the top section. So it's those three coils at the top and the two trimming caps at the top. Now I found those were fine because I looked for an oscillator signal and found that it was working. And in fact, I was tuning it and checking the oscillator frequency and found that the frequency was corresponding to what it should be approximately. I say approximately because it, it definitely was not exact. And I found that all the tunable coils on this thing have been twiddled with. Those there on the IF cans have been messed with, on the underside as well. All those have been messed with. You can see it because there's no wax in there anymore. And um, it's quite a challenge. But anyway, what I've got now is I believe I now have the AM functional, if not aligned, definitely not aligned, probably in terms of IF and RF. But it is functional. Um, I'll show you. So I've, saw, I've got the radio on. It's on restriction. I'll make it less restricted. And what we have here is I've got shortwave selected. Um, put the volume up. So our shortwave is working very, very well. Um, we're actually getting pretty good selectivity again. And um, it's it was functioning, sort of functioning before, but it seems to be working quite well now. And what I want to show you here is how I went about sorting out the, uh, the mystery of the missing FAM, or rather the missing medium wave. And what I did was, I got the schematic 
And for the RF section, I decided to um, draw the signal paths. And so, and, and maybe, you know, I was hoping that that would explain why some of the signal was getting through and some of the signal was not. And this is what we come up with when we uh, look at the signal paths for the three bands. And uh, this helped me find out exactly which, which coils were out of place. So I'm going to go into this with a, in a little bit more detail. And um, perhaps then we'll see how we came to these conclusions. So what I did here to get this uh, mystery out of the way, I first looked at the switching arrangements that are given here on the... Uh, on this information sheet. Now this actually tells you which positions are the rest positions. There's an arrow here that says when you activate it the switches move in that direction. They move one position in that direction. So what I decided to do is to look at each switch and go for each band and then draw in where the signal path would go through so you'd see where the signal is and you'd also see where the switch is open so that part of the circuit is basically cut out. And um, the result of this, looking at this, uh, the switching arrangements on the uh, RF part of the schematic, in other words, this little section down here, I printed it out three times and, and this is what I got. If we look at this side, we've got shortwave. And if you recall, shortwave was always fine to start off with. And the reason is very simple, because with shortwave, your signal comes in from the antenna there. It goes through that coil. This switch, KB, uh, KB so this is when you push shortwave, actually shorts this part of the circuit to ground. In other words, your signal is literally going across, right across that coil, which is in a transformer format, so it gets radiated to that coil. That coil across that uh, variable trimmer creates a tank circuit which then lets your signal pass through to another switching arrangement which is activated by a shortwave switch which when you press shortwave what you get is that switch goes through and your signal comes out. Now the rest of these coils and capacitors are all shorted, shorted or ignored. In some cases they're actually shorted to ground like this one here um, it's shorter to ground. This is the ferrite antenna here. It gets shorter to ground. Um, another couple of these get shorter to ground. So effectively, the effect of this circuit is completely removed from the RF section, and you got your signal going into the. Um, in fact, this goes to the one part of the tuning capacitor to then become the tuning part of the circuit, right? So shortwave was working fine and, and it makes sense because what happens, the mess was actually in these two, this coil and that coil. Um, the mess was here, so when you short this out and you disconnect all this from the circuit, any cock up that you have here is not affecting your reception at all. Okay, so that's why shortwave was working. All right, so moving on to medium wave, when you activate medium wave, what you end up is the shortwave switch is in the rest position and I had to follow through using that schematic to see where the rest, posi rest position goes. Is that the signal goes from there, it actually shorts this switch over as opposed to switching that one over. So it shorts out this coil. So that part of the transformer is no longer in circuit, right? There's nothing going through there. So that is redundant. The signal comes through here, goes to this point here. This point here is where you meet this antenna switch. Now this antenna switch is the one that's at the end of the rotating ferrite antenna. When you rotate it to the end, you actually open the switch. And when you open the switch, the external antenna becomes active. So in a situation where we're using the signal from the outside, that's what you're getting. The external antenna signal comes through here to ground. Now, the first problem I found is that SP3 was open. And the reason it was open is one of the wires was just floating. And believe me, this thing is so bloody small, you can hardly see it. 
So I'm not surprised somebody just missed it. Um, when you remove those cores, and I think one of them got jacked out, pulled, ripped out or something, because it is disconnected from the, it's, it's unglued from the base, you, you really cannot see this thing. And it took me ages to find this little piece of wire hanging in the air. So once that was in place, we now have this full circuit to ground. Okay. Then what we have is with a combination of switches in, 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 uh, in the radio, this one gets opened and this one actually is the ferrite antenna and this short across there, this is your uh, shortwave switch because you're on medium wave, it's opened. So your ferret antenna comes into play, but more importantly, your ferret antenna is always in circuit with the, the inductive effect of this coil bringing in the outside uh, signal and this core here, which is uh, tunable, adjustable, uh, in parallel with this trimmer cap, which then goes across to there and the medium wave switch activated does this combination of switching. So it switches that point to that point, which in turn goes to there. And in the open position, your uh, short wave is 45, so your signal comes out the other side. So short wave fixing this problem was a start. Now we had a bit of short wave. We had some signal on short wave. And the reason is that although this circuit was open, you still had your ferret antenna having some effect there, which then let your signal go through. So effectively with this cock up on this coil, we had the same effect as if we had taken the uh, ferret antenna to the end and or rather in effect and switched this closed. So you had some short wave. Now there was, um, so th that wiring was, was, was sorted out as well. That wiring improved that reception. Um, there was a loose connection here between this core or rather this capacitor and this point here, which meant that the resonance wasn't, uh, or rather the RF alignment was completely out. So that was corrected as well. And then your signal goes through and it comes out. So that was fixed. All right. Now in long wave, what we have is pretty similar to the medium wave. So we have the same situation here and your um, ferret antenna can also be activated or deactivated. We had the same effect here, but the difference is that this part of the circuit comes into play. So the signal, when it comes to here, as opposed to going straight out, it actually comes down into this uh, tapping of this uh, core, this coil. It's got a center tap across another small capacitor, and then that goes out. Now, what somebody had done is they'd taken this point and connected it to the wrong point. They'd connected this to the top there. So this one was completely widely, wired the wrong way. Um, once that was sorted out, we end up with effectively a uh, fairly good uh, working uh, um, AM section. Now, it doesn't mean it's got a lot of reception. There aren't that many channels around, but it is picking up and I'll, I'll show you. Now, medium wave, we can rotate the antenna. You can see it rotating there. And the way this works, if you look down here, you see 10. When I get to there, I am in the active range. Now, this means that the external antenna is off. It's shorted to ground, right? Now, when I turn this all the way across, you see that symbol come up. That means that the external antenna is in place. And if I look at the switch, it is actually open. Okay. Um, the winding on here is not allowing this to go all the way across, except under a bit of tension, but I can see in the back there that the switch is open. So that, um, that means the external antenna signal is coming through. And let's see what we hear. It's making the noises. But because we've got practically nothing to receive, it's not surprising. Let me activate the external antenna. The signal's a lot lower in volume, but quieter. Let's see if we can pick anything up here. And we may have to rotate the antenna um, when we get a signal, if and when we get a signal.
something there, but I can't for the life of me figure out what it is. There's actually a bit of motorboating when you get to the end here. And I think that has to do with the uh, alignment, the RF alignment. Um, so I'm going to leave that to the final stages when I do the RF alignment. I can sort out why the motorboating is happening at the, where is it, at the lower end of the dial. Okay. Long wave. Again, right noises. No reception because we have no channels. Let's activ activate the external antenna. And again, the right noises, no signal. Back to shortwave. All right, so what we've got is we've got our medium wave and uh, long wave back into function. Um, I think it's completely misaligned. So much so that we're actually getting motorboating, some sort of oscillation on the lower end of the medium wave uh, band. Um, it doesn't surprise me. It seems that everything has been tweaked around here. And um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it from the RF section and move on through to the mixer coil and so on and so forth. Because I literally, I have literally focused only on the on the front end on the real front end so i've literally focused um, all my attention on this section here and i now have to just make sure i have to make sure that these are in fact correct i've checked connections i haven't checked some of the components um, the green lines are the connections you see some of these components have not been ticked off because i haven't actually checked the components um, only the connections to those components. So my next task is to actually do the final checkup to the point where this signal goes into the mixer tube over there. From you see that mixer tube has um, that mixer has a a, um, a switch over there which chooses between FM and medium wave. So we got to do that. Um, and uh, once I have that done we'll be ready to well we'll be we'll be able to determine that uh, we're uh, our uh, am is working properly and then all i need to do is uh, do the am alignment and the rf alignment the if alignment and the rf alignment i think what i'm going to do in this case is probably focus on medium wave on am first do the 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 checking and the alignment um and then go on to the FM, which is going to be the final challenge, which is the one I really want to get done. But what I do know is I, I, I'm facing a bit of a challenge here because I don't have the uh, alignment instructions. But having worked so much on those coils, I can now figure out exactly which ones to, to tweak also with the oscillator section. So that shouldn't be a problem. Um, as far as the IF alignment is concerned, I think I have determined which ones are the AM and which ones are the FM. So I can actually do the IF alignment without too much of a hassle. I've been able to get this can out um, because there is uh, there are quite a few components in there that you need to, to change, especially for FM. There's that uh, electrolytic capacitor that needs checking. Um, and of course, because FM is really crappy, I have to check every single thing to determine which one is causing the major problem. It may well be the alignment of the FM, but I still have to do the checking on the components. So I did have to open that can. So that's what we have so far. And um, I am pretty pleased that I sorted out this bloody 
bird's nest of wires. It's, it's a real cock up. I'll show you. See, that gives you a better view of what we're talking about. Now, it is, it still looks like a bloody mess, but you have to be careful when you mess around with these because these things, these are the wires. See that? It, they are very, very fine. I mean, some of these, like the top one here, has a slightly thicker wire, but when you're soldering this, you, you really cannot see that you soldered them. I mean, this thing, this is the one, this one here at the bottom is the one that was loose over there. You can almost not see it. Um, these things are so fine that you almost have to look for a, a bit of a, 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 a reflection of the, the soldered end or the end with some solder on before you know that you're, you're touching the wire. Um, these three, as I said, one, two, three, these are the RF section. Those two capacitors there are the uh, RF trimmer sections in the RF trimmer. Are the trimmers in the RF section? Then these two trimmer caps here are trimmers in the uh, oscillator circuit, and then these three are oscillator circuits uh, coils. Now, if you look at it, this thing is loose. That's loose. That's loose. That one there is the bugger that had come off completely. Um, so obviously, it came off probably because something fell in there, ripped it out. And these wires all ripped out. And then the one with the center tap is this guy here. That's the center tap over there. That wire there was connected to here. Uh, in other words, the long wave part of this was shorted to the sh to the medium wave section. So this whole thing was a total mess. And then you've got all these little um, polystyrene caps on here. They're all fine, actually. And I've actually disconnected uh, the wiring from the tr these two trimmer caps, just the RF trimmer caps and actually measured the trimmer capacitors. They're supposed to be, I believe it's 10 to 45 picofarad. And the measurements I got there are both within that range. Obviously, they, they're trimmers, so they won't be at, at max. Okay, But they are reading within that, uh, that ballpark. So I believe they're fine because these things do break. Um, I had a case in the past where one of these was cracked and it was actually doing nothing in the circuit. So obviously that made it malfunction. But uh, I'm now confident that I've got this part of the circuit um, sorted. Obviously, the alignment's required. Now, I can tell that these things have been messed with because you can actually see scruff marks inside those coils. Um, and I think all of them have been messed with. So somebody just started putting things together here um, and then try to tweak some sound out of it. And they obviously got something on, on, on medium wave. Because when I did test that, I picked up the station, even though the, the long wave section was shorted to it. So it was sort of working, but it obviously had never, never really been used in medium wave. I assume this thing was being used more on short wave. Um, and they probably didn't bother with medium wave or long wave. It's a little bit the case here because... With medium wave, I get practically nothing. Long wave, I really get nothing. Um, but I still like to make sure that those sections are working because then you feel confident. You, you know, you enjoy the fact that you've got the radio back up and, and running properly. Um, the fact that you don't have any stations is a is a mute point. But um, yeah, perfectionism is a pain in the ass, believe me. Right, that's it for now. Hope you enjoy this section. Ciao.